so can you say a little bit about the source of inspiration uh, for this documentary, where the idea for this didn't come from? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, a lot of my work has always been um, about how power functions, about, you know, not just the idea that power exists out there, but how does it, you know, flex its authority through tools, technologies, policies, these kind of like, softer forms of violence um uh so i'm always um i shouldn't say softer like more uh more like latent forms of violence um that have just as much of a, a, a horrible effect um so yeah i, I always kind of have that larger mission in my mind and um i'm always like i feel like it, with that orientation i'm just always drawn to certain ideas or images and i think for me, this the really the seeds of this film were uh, coming out of um, uh, the events in Baltimore surrounding um, the the killing of Freddie Gray in in 2015. Um, there was a, a lot of conversation um, around police reform in the city and like what policing should be, uh, and it was just like really uh, ground zero for a lot of those hopes and also like you know for out, like a lot of mistakes and and. Uh, yeah, I just uh, one of those main one of the main reforms being proposed was um, body cameras, and I didn't know anything about them. Um, and I thought it was interesting this idea of of filming as a way to hold police accountable. And um, as I looked more into it, you know, realizing that the cameras were also made uh, were made by this company Axon, who got their start making weapons. I just you know thought that weaponization of of, of the camera was like such a potent central image that I felt compelled to uh, to explore. Yes, the documentary is uh, very complex and it tackles the issue of power from several perspectives. Even it looks like to me like a kind of a PhD dissertation. Uh, so it uh, appears to me that you did lots of research about this topic. So I wonder if you can say a little bit about more the, about the process of documentation, uh, how you uh, uh, about your uh, theoretical knowledge uh, uh, and the, that you try to document or to try to have for this project. Yeah, I appreciate you saying. I mean, it it really did feel like more of a dissertation than a than a film at times, just like in terms of all of the reading and gathering of materials. Um, but also, it was really important to us that it it was very approachable. We didn't want to be pretentious. We didn't want to make few people feel like they were excluded. From, from these ideas. Um, so like, you know, just, just as much as we were always trying to, you know, reach towards all these wild connections, we were always trying to make sure that um, it, was, it was clear, it was concise, and that, that really anyone could, could follow along. And, you know, I think even that, I don't think that like, you know, there are a lot of complex like connections and stuff like that, but like the central messages are, are pretty obvious. I think like, you know, and don't require, like, I think they're, they're really apparent to a lot of people, which is that, you know, there's, there's a real problem with systemic racism in this country that influences and I mean, and the world that has all, like that these, that these forms of oppression have always existed and they've influenced technology and technology and tools have always been used to further that objective. Um, I don't think that's like a particularly, um, uh, new insight. There's like so many smarter, better people than me doing that. Um, what we really tried to do was take that kind of obvious statement and find the surprising ways in which it appears in the world. Like I think, you know, you take something as like the body camera and, and you try to connect it to um, to this history or even like Etienne Jules Murray, who is like you know, if you take a film 101 class, you know who Murray is, like, you know, making the, one of the first cameras. We wanted to, like, not just write a w Wikipedia entry on him, but, like, actually try to read him against the grain and, like, try to find ways of, of, of approaching him from a slightly different angle. So even for, for the more obvious connections, we were always, uh, for the more obvious topics, we were just trying to find new connections. One of the central figures when we they talk about the issue of uh, surveillance and power is Foucault. Uh, Foucault is very central in all of the literature, but I don't see too much uh, um, discussions about um, Foucault's theories uh, or Foucault's ideas. And you refer to 
other intellectual. I'm just wondering if there was any reason or if you wanted to tackle this issue from a new perspective. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I mean, Michel Foucault was definitely one of the founding texts of this, um, of this uh, film, along with many others. His model of the Panopticon is obviously like kind of uh, really in a lot of ways put this whole field of surveillance studies on the map. Um, you know, there is a moment where Ra uh, Steve is walking through the factory and kind of points up at a literal panopticon. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, I, I think, and I'm not the first to say that there's, there's been so much incredible writing around this as Simone Brown, dark matters on the surveillance of blackness, like being another foundational text to this, um, uh, to this project, which, you know, is just a really deep dive into the ways in which race and surveillance and technology have always been different sides of the same drive. Um, but yeah, in, in that book, she really talks about like a po what a post panopticon society looks like. The, the panopticon model is, you know, where you have a single consolidated authority uh, looking out, you know, from a single place and, you know, that the light, you know, is shining on you and you may or may not be uh, seen. And, I think while that was appropriate at the time, I think we're living in a in a in a in a very different era now. Of um, we carry like the mo like the most perfect surveillance device on us at all times, and it's as if the panopticon has been inverted, and we all carry it within us. So it's more of a distributed surveillance model that is uh, networked and and fluid, and um, yeah, it's it that that sort of single eye, that single God's eye, isn't quite you know uh, the most um, uh, correct model, I feel, to describe the state that we're in. I really like uh, the poetical language that sometimes in the film we see when it describes about the process of being observed, uh, for example, uh, by uh, police camera. It was very philosophical observation or philosophical uh, language. So I'm just wondering what was the source of inspiration for those uh, theories or for those reflections is it you who are right or is it coming from some... yeah i think um yeah so i i i wrote the 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 script um you know just based on all my research a lot of those ideas i mean i don't i don't think i'm making any new connections i'm just trying to bring together all of this these connections and and resources that i've and this knowledge that i've been able to amass like about this one super niche topic um but yeah you know i think it's really important part of that process of like bringing it from this academic cerebral world and like just back down to earth, like it's, it's, it's through the poetic and like, you know, finding ways to crystallize certain concepts in the most, um, uh, yeah, concise way that I can. And I think that's what poetry does is it can always evoke something greater than itself. And, you know, it's kind of going the other way though, is it's like, it's, it's, it's evoking like, you know, instead of like, invoking this transcendent world out there like the, the the single to the many it's going from the many to the to the single and like bringing us back down to earth and so um yeah you know it was, it was just very it was just part of like trying to invite people in and just kind of like have you know have more fun with it it's not like all just super formal and i'm just really inspired by you know the, harun faroki who's like one of my you know all-time favorite thinkers artists people ever and the way in which he brings such a you know um, academic rigor to his practice while also finding such beauty in these histories and these archives. And also, you know, it's, I, I don't think anyone does it better than him. And um, it's definitely an approach that um, I, I or, you know, Chris Marker, Hito Styro, like there's so many other artists who are, who, who do this so well. And I think in, in many ways, like the entire um, essay film tradition is, 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 is really about, mm -hmm. about that. Like just you as a, as, not some objective authority, but as a person in the world trying to make sense. And not only, it's not, it's not just about where, where you arrive, but you know, that process of getting there. One of the amazing uh, things in the film is that uh, when uh, the police uh, officers describes how they need to use these devices, or what are its utilities, it seems very real, uh, the whole uh, images with the police officers, other police officers sitting and uh, listening. So I'm just curious how you shoot uh, those uh, scenes. Uh, was it the real police officer or was it the actor that you give them the line to describe the situation? So I'm just curious. Yeah. You're saying in the classroom where they're learning how no. to, to use that? Yeah. No, I'm, it, so those are real, that's a real, uh, 
it's a real uh, training seminar. Um, I found out that was one of the very first connections. That was the very first thing we shot in the entire film. Um, when I realized that um, these body cameras were being uh, adopted um, by the Baltimore Police Department, I took a, a the next logical step. Well, if they're adopting it, they must be getting trained how to use these cameras. And so I thought that like that idea of kind of like a little mini film school for police officers was a really compelling way into that. Um, and yeah, so we, it, it was just one like four hour session um, where we were just in the classroom. It's a required course for all police officers to take on the Baltimore Police Department where they learn, you know, as you saw, uh, the operation of the camera, how to save the files and, you know, just general shooting strategies. Um, but yeah, I was just really interested in like, you know, coming from, you know, taking film classes or just being engaged with documentary cinema. I was like here in this very bureaucratic clinical space, you're seeing those same I ideas of um, shooting, framing, editing, like, but in this very bureaucratic, lifeless police language so that 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 use of language was to me was 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 really fascinating um and what that, that like and also the 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 deeper violence that it was always concealing mm -hmm. and in general how long did the shooting take place the whole project <sighs> the whole project um i it started and this wasn't continuous um it started june the first day of shooting was June 22nd, 2017. And the last day of shooting was um, December 21st, 2019. So like, yeah, two and a half years, but like off and on. And even before I started shooting, I had been researching and I mean, it took me months to correspond with um, the Baltimore Police Department and, and Axon and all these people. And, you know, so I, oftentimes the shoots were very, like the individual sections, we'd only be there for a day or four hours. But like leading up to that was like months and months of, of planning and collaboration. So um, it was like very kind of surgical <laughs> in, our, in our approach. And uh, how was the, in terms of collaboration, how was the police uh, department uh, reaction uh, to your idea of shooting or doing film on this subject? Well, I think the the idea of body cameras and the way that they're portrayed to the public is that they'll increase transparency and that, you know, they will um, give the public a better insight into policing and while also holding both sides accountable. That's like the, you know, that's the pitch, right? Like you're filming me, I'm filming you, we're both held accountable here. And you can know, you know, how this is happening and that can increase trust and obviously prevent, you know, the worst possible instances. Um, so whenever we were approaching the, these situations, we always wanted to like, you know, we tried to take them up on that transparency to, I think that's the clearest way. It's just like, well, if you're being transparent, like we'd love to know how your transparency is working. <laughs> like, and so that was always our entry point. And so, um, and we didn't push back against that. I think we were always really leaning into the, to the presentation. And I think that, you know, the film doesn't do a lot of editorializing um, about uh, what I think about this. It really tries to ask the audience to sit there and for themselves, the pieces to make right, that makes sense because you just said that or, oh, I see how this is working. I, I think that that's like a, you know, ultimately a more rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of funding, uh, how you manage to secure funds for the film? Is it kind of private equity? Is it kind of uh, funding by institution? It was. It was a. It was a combination of some private funders. Um, we received some funding uh, from uh, Sundance Documentary Film Program. Um, we received some of their grant funds. Uh, Center Reach was a huge help in, in bringing uh, sponsors to the project. Um, but uh, you know. I, uh, we were very lucky to partner with a new um, production company named Sandbox Films, um, which is a sort of offshoot of the Simons Foundation. Um, and Sandbox came in and, and um, you know, uh, executive produced the, the film and brought a lot of um, financial support as well as creative support uh, to the project. So they're, they're, they were incredible to work with. Um, they are 
rare in the field, I feel like, because they are very understanding of not just the ideas present in the project, but of the real kind of form of how you tell, talk about those ideas. And, you know, there's, uh, it's hard to find people like that sometimes. So we're, I'm very appreciative to that. Uh, obviously this year is a very confusing year uh, at the same time, COVID situation, but at, on the other hand, I think for you, you had lots of problems that happening in US like George Floyd or the other stuff that makes your film very relevant. So I'm just thinking, what is your general thought about uh, uh, this year and the, uh, the future that you see for your film, especially because of the COVID and the online screening and stuff like that? Do you feel that it is still good time or is it still you have the medium or uh, what you want to, um, uh, to, to, to give more people the opportunity to see your uh, work uh, on a very timely subject? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that remains to be seen. Um, you know, uh, I don't feel like I have any new insight to how like, like thoroughly messed up this past year was for everyone and just like kind of seeing just an entire future possible, I don't know, just, I have nothing new to add. It's just, it's a, it's a really insane time. And, um, you know, that isn't necessarily discontinuous of every, anything that came before it. It's just these collision of all these things that people have been saying, this is a problem, this is a problem. And then here we are. And so I don't have any or insightful to say about that. Um, I think there was a worry when we were making the film early on, you know, we made it very much in the, aftermath for me of you know the uh, the killing of freddie gray and like the the hopes and ultimate failures of a lot of these police reform measures in in baltimore and um you know as we were talking the body cameras i think we had a real worry that like you know like are we going to be eclipsed by the news cycle you know there's just so much stuff happening all the time and we'd be talking about one camera and then axon would introduce a new one and so it was like we were and we had to kind of like stop ourselves and say like we're not journalists, we're telling a much longer view of history and we can't play catch up with the news. Um, and I, I, we can just only hope that people have the time and attention to sort of sit with this slower study of, of this present moment. Um, and, you know, the events of this last summer, like, unfortunately proved that like they're still incredibly relevant. And I, I saw also this, like this moment where there was a lot of false information being passed around about body cameras. And um, I think that, uh, I mean, as a character says in the film, like people are very sensitive about crime and obviously like, it's just an incredibly traumatic uh, thing. And it, it, but unfortunately, like, as we've seen everywhere, like sometimes the most damaging political measures are taken right in the aftermath of these traumatic incidents, 9-11, Hurricane Katrina, like all of these things that, you know, it's the shock doctrine, you know, and um, as hard as it is, I, I, we, we saw an opportunity to, to help bring this, to help provide more context to that present moment. Um, and also to understand that like this film needed to be grounded in a very concrete moment and with real people and with real stories and real stakes. Mm -hmm. And I think we risked before, before this pandemic, before this summer, before we it did risk going into the overly abstract or conceptual you know and just kind of floating on that and yeah this past year has just been a return to ourselves and our bodies and just like what our material needs are and just really uh strengthen like just re like really drove home the importance of connecting these ideas to a material present and um yeah, I hope it's also part of a lot of other work that we're doing outside of the film. So there's no need for just the film to do to do everything. Uh, and it's also a very a strange and confusing year for the festival, film festival. And this is the first year that time I think uh, Sundance is being held online. So I wonder how was the participations in the online version of uh, Sundance Festival? Uh, did you feel that you get uh, enough reception that you that you thought your project deserve um yeah i mean it's it's just the beginning this is like it's going to be a long year and um we're really excited this is like the, the the ideal place to to 
bring it to the world. Um, I I was lucky enough like to actually, I mean, we've been, we're finishing the film up to like a week ago. So we're just like so tired. And in a way it was actually really nice just to kind of have that distance and be able to wake up in our own bed. And, you know, but we, we actually did something fun where I, I'm actually at a good dear friend of mine, Albert Bernie's house in, in Baltimore right now. And he has another film in the festival called Strawberry Mansion, which I highly, highly recommend. But um, a, a group of the crew, we all, we all got tested in quarantine for a week and, you know, did all like, you know, hyper safe procedures and potted up for the festival. So we've actually been hanging out for six days and we rented a house together and kind of had our own festival. Um, but, having that intimate friend connection in the physical world and, you know, also having the connection in the virtual space was, it was really fascinating and cool. And um, yeah, it's just been really, it's been really amazing to see people in real time, give feedback and love for the film. And, you know, you just work on this thing for so long and you, in the end, you just don't know if people are actually going to see the work that you did. And it just feels really nice to have it out there and, um, having people respond to it so uh thanks for the interview i'm just wondering if you have uh if there is anything that you want to say at the end of the interview that you want to pay attention no i think i think we hit a lot of a good uh covered our bases and i feel like yeah i think less is more sometimes 